append multiple columns with a dynamic array? Well, in 1644, we saw how to do this with two columns. And in that video, we saw that Power Query is the easiest method. Well, our friend Bill Sizzes suggested a formula that if we add an item to this third list, all three lists plus any new data are included. Now in the comments below video 1644, there were a bunch of cool dynamic array formulas for two different lists. And you can check those out here. But in this video, 1646, we want to take one, two, three different tables and mash them all together in a single column. Now, interestingly enough, the first thing we're going to do is take one, two, three columns and mash them together into a two-way table with three columns. Now, the lookup function we can use to look up three columns and display them side by side is choose. Now, index usually expects a 1 or a 2 or a 3. And then it goes and gets either value 1, 2, or 3. But we want all three columns simultaneously. So we use array syntax, open curly bracket, 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, close curly bracket. So index has, please go get all three items simultaneously, comma. Value 1, well, we're going to give it the name of the first column, name 1 comma, value 2 will be name 2, comma, and then name 3. Now, when I close parentheses, it's very important for index number, we used array syntax. And commas in array syntax means go over a column. If we had used semicolons, that means rows, and would have picked out this item from row 1, 2, and 3. But that's not what we want. So we use the correct syntax. Now, because choose delivers a table, when I hit Enter, there's our table. Very importantly, any cell I click in, the formula is grayed out. It only lives in the top left corner. There it is. We can see our formula. Now we have a two-way table with rows and columns. So we can create our index formula. An array will have the table. All we need now is the correct row and column number. We'll create the row and the column here as dynamic array so the formula spills. But before we do that, what do we need? As we copy down, we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 row numbers, all column 1. Then when we get to row 9, I need to repeat 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, but all for column 2. So here I need 1 to 8 three times. And here I need a bunch of 1s, then a bunch of 2s, and so on. Now we're in the new Excel, so we get to use sequence. It'll generate any sequence of numbers we can dream up. Now, rows, I need to count how many cells are here. 8 times 3, 24. So I'm going to do that using the rows function. And watch this. I'm going to refer to the formula in F3 and everything that's spilled by using the pound symbol. That's 8 times columns F3 pound. All right, so if we were to highlight this and hit F9, 24. Now I'm going to leave all the arguments out just for the moment. And we could see from that top cell, it spills. Now I need to convert this to 1 to 8, 1 to 8, F2. Now we click back in sequence. I can see rows, so I type a comma. We do not need columns argument, comma. For the start argument, I want the sequence to start at 0. Now when I hit Enter, the sequence starts at 0 and goes to 23. Now I have 0 to 7, where I need 1 to 8, and then 8 to 15, where I need 1 to 8. Well, guess what? If we divide all these numbers by the number 8, which is the number of rows over here, and ask for the remainder, I'll get 0 to 7, 0 to 7, and so on. So in the top cell, I use the mod function. There's the number. Now I just comma need the divisor or denominator, rows of F3 pound, close parentheses. And so mod will give us the remainder of doing that division, so Enter. Now I just need to add 1, add 1, and I have what I want. And it will spill 1 to 8, 1 to 8. So those are the row numbers we'll use in index. Now we need column, and it's going to be similar. We'll copy sequence, Control-C equals Control-V. 
Now at the end, I want to click Inside Sequence. Now we're going to start at 0. But when we type a comma, we want the step to be a little bit so it goes 0 almost all the way up to 1. And the little bit we want is 1 divided by 8, which is however many rows are in the spilled array. Close parentheses. Now for us, because it's 1 divided by 8, if we F9, it's 0 0.125. Control Z. When I enter this, look at that. I almost have what I want, 0 up to 0.875. If I simply add 1, F2 plus 1, and when I enter, now I have 1 all the way up to 1.875. That's almost what we want, because 1's represent the first column. Then 2's represent the second column. Now, we could use the int function or trunk or something to get at the 1's and the 2's. But guess what? Over here, when we use index, index is program when it sees a row or column to only take the integer part. So watch this. Equals index. We need for the array f3 pound, comma. Then for row number, here's the rows, all of them. So we use the pound comma, and the column numbers pound. Now when I close parentheses and hit Enter, we almost have what we want. It's just the NAs that are messing this up. Well, we can filter those out using the filter function. Now I'm going to have to use this twice, Control-C. Filter is one of these new amazing dynamic array formulas. So there's the array we want to filter, comma. And guess what? I want whatever is not N A. So I use not and then is N A. Control V. Now I close parentheses, close parentheses. So include will have the trues and falses to get at just the names. And that will filter the first argument and filter. Now when I hit Enter, that is absolutely amazing. If I come over here, and here's tie, Enter. Absolutely beautiful. Control Z, Z. If I change this and it's just Sue and Gigi, well, that's a mess there, but not here. Now, you could hide all this, or we could mash it all together, or we could do what Bill Sizzes did. He took this table that we created, created a defined name, and then mashed everything together. All right, we saw how to use choose to put multiple columns side by side, mod and sequence to generate the numbers 1 to 8, sequence to generate column numbers, and that cool formula to mash it all together and append one on top of the other. All right, thanks to Bill Sizzes for that amazing trick. And of course, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to learn a lot more about dynamic arrays, check out this comprehensive introduction to Office 365 Dynamic Arrays.